I think it's time for us to get into some math. Um, it's going to be simple math, but um, I think you're going to really understand like how to make things really smart um, in doing so. So, um, well, let's set it up this way, right? We're going to have floor plates, right? These floor plates are going to be broken by how many, um, I guess, like, the, the floor plates are only going to be subtracted by the volume of, of the building, no matter what form it takes. So those floor plates are going to go up so high based off of the series that we've created, which is this. Um, that series right now is setting a certain height for the top of the building, which is fine. It's generating this. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, I theoretically don't even need the... Um, Let's see, we've got this is just one polyline curve. It's going in a series. We don't even really need the series itself. We just need a value. We need one single value that's going to create the height of the building. So we're replacing this, whatever that is, minus one. Okay? So um, we can actually just use math in order to generate that value. And then this, it heavily simplifies what's happening here. Um, so if we're going to have a certain number of surfaces, right, floor plates, um, we're going to start it at a certain height. That height is a value of 15 feet or whatever it could be. Let's say it's 30, right? Because a lot of times high rises will have a higher, a, a taller first floor, and then the rest of them are a little bit smaller. Um, so we have 30 feet at the first floor, and then after that, every other floor is only going to be 15 feet, and we have four of them. So in order to generate a, a curve that is at the same height as this building but doesn't have to go through all of this with a lot of wasted data coming out at the end, um, we can just multiply those and add them. So we're going to do math operators multiplication. We're going to say um, 15 times 4. And then we're going to go, uh, that gives us obviously 60. And then we're going to go to um, addition. And we're going to say um, 60 plus that 30, or 30 plus 60, whatever, it doesn't matter. 30 plus 60. Um, and that value is going to give us 90 feet, which is the overall height of our building. So now, if we want to, instead of creating a series and then extruding all of those items like this to create those floor plates, mm -hmm. instead of doing all that, we can actually extrude or move um, this polygon by one value, which is this. Oh, I think my math is a little wrong. Oh, that's right, because it's it's 15. Um, it's 15 times four minus. Actually, it's it's going to be 15 times three because it's the space. So I can move. I, I'll copy and paste this value in here. Um, pull that aside. So uh, four minus one is three. That's going to be our multiplier. So we have 45 feet and then 75 feet. Does that make sense to you? You want me to draw it on the board? Yeah. Okay. So keep a close eye on um, the values over here. So we've got 75 feet and then we have these. Okay, I want you to look at those. Um, We have a base floor that's down here. Yeah. Okay, our base floor down here is at zero feet. You guys understand that, right? Our next floor up here is at 30 feet. We've created four extrusions of that, each one at 15 feet. So that means um, we have. Yeah, so we went one, two, three more. And each one is 15. So this is um, 45. And this one is 60 feet. And this one is 75 feet. 
You guys get that? Yep. So those are just the numerical values until I've created a series and that series gets used to multiply my floors. So right now, all we've done is just total up what we're going to do, because these haven't happened yet. Right, so I found this value by doing the math for what I'm going to do to those. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, so now let's actually do it. So we bifurcated um, the, the definition. The series is actually gonna be used up here. So I'll just leave that there for now. Um, and I heavily simplified what's happening here. So now I'm moving the one item, which is the polyline curve, I'm moving it up. That item is already in place for where it needs to be. I'm going to rotate that item. I don't need this anymore. I don't need that anymore. And I don't need these. So now the rotation is just going to happen on this one polygon, which is that like that. That's all. So um, in cleaning up this definition a little bit, let me um, kind of rehash what we did. Put that here, paint this back. This. Okay. So we have our parameters for how the floors are going to be broken up. Um, I multiplied the number of floors by three. by three, which is one less than the, the number. Well, actually, it's three spaces, one, two, three. And then four surfaces. So that's why the four is feeding into the series, because I'm going to use that for how many surfaces to create. But the three was used to calculate how many spaces are, there are between those floors. Um, and then I added that together to my first floor, which is 30 feet. Um, and then I moved my polygon up a total of that many feet um, and then rotated it like we did in the previous definition. So let me move this down. Move this guy back over here. And I'm going to group that up. So now this is my building mass. Clear as day? OK. Now let's get to the floor plates. You guys need a moment to catch up before I do that? OK, tell you what, I'm going to stop this video where it is. Um, and I'm going to let you guys catch up on that. And then uh, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a break before I go into the floor plates. Yes? OK.